Hello everyone, uh, my name is TJ, um, and I'm here to talk about how I kind of lost my passion for programming and how I managed to find it again. I started programming when I was about seven years, that's almost 30 years from now, uh, and back in those days we used to type in code from a book in order to play games. But it wasn't soon uh, before I realized what I really wanted to be when I grew up. But over the years, I've been more and more uh, involved in managing stuff. And that kind of made it hard to actually find the time to do programming. And it kind of took the fun out of doing it as well. So when f four years ago, I was di diagnosed with acute leukemia, which was really serious. Um, luckily, it turned out to be a false diagnosis but it forced me to think about what I really wanted to do in life. So I started thinking, how would it be to do something completely different? And the more I thought about it, the more I felt I had to try something new. And the long story short is, I ended up getting a job in a company called Oceaneering. And Oceaneering, they make really high-tech stuff like robots and spacesuits for harsh environments like the outer space and the deep sea. And the job I got was building, maintaining, and operating ROVs. As you can see, ROVs is uh, really large, uh, extremely expensive underwater robots that can do pretty much the same stuff that divers used to do, only much deeper and more efficiently, and of course, a lot safer. But in the beginning, oh yeah, sorry, uh, operating them is kind of like playing a PlayStation game, only with millions of dollars at stake and uh, usually a very eager and quite angry client waiting behind your back to get finished what you're doing. In the beginning, it was kind of scary being a, a complete novice again, while everyone else seemed to have really solid experiences from aircraft mechanics, robotics, uh, automation, and so on. But it turned out that being a novice again was actually quite fun. I got to learn a whole bunch of new and really exciting, cool stuff and it actually turned out to be a lot of familiar stuff for me as well. Like commuting. It takes about the same time to get to work. It has almost the same level of noise as well. And I'm pretty sure the comfort level is pretty much the same. And of course you have the complexity. Complexity built by someone else that you have to maintain with inaccessible and incomprehensible documentation. I think a qu a quite a few of us have done that as well. And there's no way past the legacy stuff. I quite actually did not think I'd ever need my DOS skills ever again. But it was nice being the expert in at least one topic. And just like you have in programming, really boring tasks it can be extremely boring staring at that silver bullet there for 12 hours straight just to see if it moves slightly. But everything is forgotten when you get to do fun stuff that you're not really supposed to do. When you go fishing with a multi-million dollar robot <laughs> and you get to eat the fish afterwards. And when you get to pick apart and reassemble robotic arms built from pure titanium that cost more than your house, and you get to play with them afterwards. So, working offshore in Norway means that you, get, you spend two weeks offshore and you get four weeks at home. So I managed actually to keep my software job and did that while, while I was at home. But it was really hectic keeping two full-time jobs uh, at the same time, so I had to make a choice. And faced with the reality of actually leaving software development for good, I finally realized what I really wanted to do. So I chose software development. And I'm not sure if I would have done that if I didn't take the detour. I think that's what made me realize what I really wanted to do. In hindsight, it took me a couple of years, but I think it was worth it. And I think the biggest lesson I learned is 
that I should not be afraid to try something new just because I'm scared of losing what I have. So, thanks. <laughs>